Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a stock that has really not been doing that well in the market right now, and their business could be in a lot of trouble. And that stock is Intel. And we can see that over the last year, Intel is down around 30%, while the rest of the market is up 3%. So they're completely underperforming the market right now. And so in this video, I'm going to try to look into some of the recent news that came out surrounding Intel. I'm going to look into their financial statements to get a better understanding of the underlying health of the company. And then I'm going to use a discounted cash flow model to figure out the intrinsic value per share for Intel. So we can know if this is a good price to buy into the stock from a value investing perspective. And so right here in this article, it's titled, Is Intel Stock a Buy Now? And some key points that I touch on are that Intel's Q1 earnings report cleared Wall Street's low bar. Also, their revenue declined for the fifth consecutive quarter, and its margins are still sliding. But the company's quarter two guidance suggests that they might have reached the bottom of their decline. So it might be a good time to buy in right now. So we'll see if that's true. So right here, this part of the article is titled, The Chip Making Giant Could Finally Be Approaching a Cyclical Trough. Trough is the bottom. And so right here, it's highlighted the chip makers revenue dropped 36% year over year to 11.7 billion. It still beat analysts estimates of 570 million for the first quarter of 2023. And their adjusted net loss of $169 million was sharply down from net profit of 3.6 billion year over year for the first quarter of 2023 compared to 2022. So. Obviously, revenue is declining for the fifth consecutive quarter, and net income is not even profitable. It's just a net loss right now. Right here, they point out that the stock is currently down more than 50% below its all-time high from just over two years ago. And so just to touch on some of the underlying issues that are affecting their business, for starters, they're the world's largest manufacturer of 86 chips for PCs and servers but they've been having a crisis over the past decade for three reasons. One is that ARM-based chips are rendering Intel's 86 chips obsolete because they're more power efficient, more customizable, and better suited for mobile devices. Also, Intel's products recently fell behind Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, or TSM, on the New York Stock Exchange and Samsung in a process race to manufacture smaller, denser, and more power efficient chips. And as a result, their rival AMD, which outsourced all of their production to Taiwan, overtook Intel with cheaper, more advanced 86 chips. And so the problem mainly is that Intel is keeping all of their production in-house, but the chips that they're producing are rendered obsolete to Taiwan's chips that, are, that they're producing. And because AMD only uses Taiwan's chips, AMD ended up passing Intel as a result of that through product development. Right here, they point out that between the first quarters of 2017 and 2022, Intel's share of the PC of the, of the CPU market plunged from 81% to 62%. And in that same time period, AMD's share nearly doubled from 18% to 34%. So Intel basically fell sharply and AMD doubled their market share during that time period. Everybody has been calling upon Intel to basically abandon their product, de product designs and product development and become a fabulous chip maker like AMD. But Intel rejected that and they decided to double down on upgrading their own products. And as a result, their expenses spiked and because of that, they were forced to reduce their dividend by 65% earlier this year. And so that's obviously not good news. It's very bad to see that a company is reducing their dividend. It's an obvious sign of financial stress. And that came mainly as a result of questionable executive decision making to double down on upgrading their products instead of just outsourcing their product development the same way that AMD does, which is their main competitor. Right here, another key economic point they point out uh, for why Intel is declining at the moment is because during the pandemic, there was a lot of remote work, high-end gaming, and cloud services being used. And as a result, there was surging demand for Intel's products, which temporarily masked their existential challenges. 
but obviously the numbers don't lie. We can see right here from this table to end off the article. This is their revenue growth year over year for the past five quarters from Q1 2022 all the way through to Q1 2023. And we can see year over year, their revenue had declined 1%, 17%, 15%, negative 28%, and 36%. So it just kept on declining and declining and declining. And right now we're in Q1 2023 where they've declined 36% year over year for the revenue. So we're gonna see if they're able to bounce back from this decline and salvage their share price because right now it is not looking too good. And so these are their financial statements. I'm gonna look at their income statement, balance sheet and cash flow statement. We can see right here, net revenue declined from 18 billion to 11 billion year over year. That's a 36% decline that we talked about from the article. And then net income declined from $8.1 billion of net income in first quarter of 2022 to $2.7 billion net loss in the first quarter of 2023. That's a decline of 134% year over year. So pretty bad, pretty bad. Then right here in their balance sheet, total assets are up from 182 billion to 185 billion from December 31st to April 1st. We can see most of their business is financed by equity. They have $100 billion of equity. And of that, they have $65 billion of retained earnings, which is a declining balance from 70 billion in December. And lastly, right here in their cash flow statement, we can see that their operating cash flow declined from operating cash flow of 5.8 billion to operating cash used of 1.7 billion dollars in the first quarter of 2023 and we can also see they still paid out hefty dividends to shareholders in the first quarter at 1.5 billion dollars which is up from 1.4 billion in the first quarter of 2022 so they are still paying out dividends to their shareholders but obviously it's pretty difficult to mask the investment losses that their shareholders experience from their stock price just by paying out some dividends. And so right here, this is a discounted cash flow model to figure out the intrinsic value per share for Intel. They're estimated to grow at 6% for the next five years. They had a negative free cash flow of $9.6 billion in their most recent full year. They have a net debt position of 22 billion on their balance sheet and 4 billion shares outstanding. And so as a result, with the discounted cash flow model, if you put in a negative free cash flow metric, then the discounted model is gonna end up producing a negative intrinsic value per share. And I couldn't really find a positive free cash flow metric just because Intel doesn't really have much in the way of free cash flow. So pretty difficult to value the company this way. And so it's pretty much irrelevant. You can't really use this discounted cash flow model to value Intel just because their cash flow metrics are not that good. Then right here, I did a competitor analysis comparing them to their other two main competitors, AMD and Nvidia. We can see that across the board, it looks like Intel has middling of the pack, gross profit margin, net profit margin, and return on assets. AMD has the lowest profit margins and they also have the highest PE ratio. We can see that Intel and Nvidia both pay a dividend and Intel's dividend is a much larger percentage of their share price than Nvidia's. Basically for every $100 that you own of, or that you invest into Intel, you're getting paid $5.52 per year. But for Nvidia, for every $100 you invest into Nvidia, you're getting paid a dividend of about eight cents per year. So obviously in terms of dividend per share, it looks like Intel is doing way better, but you have to keep in mind the fact that Intel's share price is doing way worse. So pick your poison, you know, you can either have a high dividend with a declining share price or a low dividend or no dividend with a, a decently growing business as we saw from the article. And then lastly, to end off the video, I wanted to compare them to other companies we've looked at in past videos. Right here for share price compared to intrinsic value, Intel obviously from the discounted cash flow model is they have a negative intrinsic value estimate. So can't really include them on this table. 
They're not doing better than any of the companies right now. Google, GE, Chevron, and ConocoPhillips are the only four companies that are trading below intrinsic value per share. In terms of growth rate, we saw that Intel had like a 6% growth rate projected for the next five years. Not good enough to get them onto the table. Exxon Mobil holds number one spot at around 26 to 27%. In terms of gross profitability and net profitability, Intel has 42% gross profit, 12% net profit. Also not good enough to get them onto the table here. Adobe holds the number one spot at 89%. Microsoft at 36% for net profit. And then for stock performance over the last five years, Intel is down almost 50%. So they're definitely not getting onto this table. Right now, Tesla holds the number one spot at a thousand percent. And one of Intel's main competitors, AMD, holds the second place spot up 774%. Meanwhile, Intel is down 46%. So you can see the discrepancy here across the competitive landscape. But all in all, it looks like Intel is not competitive compared to the other companies we've looked at in past videos. They're, they do pay a very good dividend, but their profit margins aren't really that much better than their competitors. NVIDIA obviously has the best, and their discounted cash flow model metrics are all out of whack because they have negative free cash flow metrics. So really not very good past news for Intel, but we'll see if this is the bottom and if this is a good place to, to buy Intel uh, in hindsight, because if their stock price is able to increase from here, then it could lead to some pretty massive gains if they're able to recover to their previous all-time highs here. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of Intel. Leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see everyone in the next one.